sticking brake or dragging brake is a common pro problem with uh, the four territories in Falcons. Uh, the last generations of territories were affected with it and this generation too. So uh, there are usually two common reasons uh, for this to happen. Uh, the one is uh, either you're, you have a problem with your booster or there's a lever in the booster which is sticking. And uh, the second problem because, can be because of uh, uh, stuck calipers. So, uh, so now whether you need to fix your booster or the caliper uh, depends on what kind of symptoms you're facing. So if your symptoms are intermittent, which means that uh, you um, sometimes you feel like your car is dragging and uh, stopping by itself, but the other time it's running uh, flawlessly and no issues at all, uh, then problem may be with your booster because if it's sticking, then the sticking is intermittent. Uh, and it can also be a booster problem if you stop your car, raise it up and then rotate your wheels and they rotate freely or if you try to press the pistons, uh, the caliper pistons in and they go in without any problem, then your problem uh, is at the brake booster itself. So intermittent problem means the brake booster or if the problem goes away when the engine is shut down, then still it is the booster problem because uh, the engine is no more generating the vacuum and the boosters uh, will won't be working. But if your calipers are calipers are stuck, then you have a problem. It will stuck all the time. Uh, a dead giveaway would be if you are taking a few kilometers of drive, stop your car, and try to uh, touch the rims on the, in the centers. And then if you feel one or two really hot, uh, one or two tires really hard as compared to the rest of them, then those tires are the problem. You have to look out, look at only those tires. So a dead giveaway would be that if you try to rotate your wheel and if it doesn't rotate or if it rotates uh, with the friction or usually it doesn't rotate i mean stick caliper strictly means that it won't rotate at all so this one rotates freely you might hear a grinding noise but this is totally normal but this is a normal caliper this was stuck i fixed it without any issues i'll show you an example of a stuck caliper so this one is mildly stuck remember because it was really stuck initially i tried fixing it but it's you can i can hardly move it <coughs> I can still move it, but it's not uh, rotating freely. So uh, today I'll fix it once and for all. In fact, thrice and for all, because I have already tried fixing it two times, but this time I know what's uh, what's wrong and how to fix it for free. So yeah, I'll show you what to do now. Just uh, take off the wheel. This one, as you've seen, is stuck. So we'll need to figure out what's happening. We'll fix it. The wheel is off now. Uh, to remove the caliper, all we need to do is to remove these two bolts. One over here and one over here. So if you haven't removed the caliper before, just make sure that if you're trying to remove this, you have to count to hold this with the nut that uh, goes in there. So yeah, just use the uh, two touch. I removed the two retaining bolts. Now remember, if your caliper is stuck, you might have to put something and wedge in there and uh, use some kind of a force to remove this thing and dislodge it. Because uh, if it's really stuck, uh, it, it, it will take some force, but eventually you'll be able to remove it. So. Once you remove it, ah, should not have let this happen. So yeah, just uh, use some kind of a hanging mechanism to hang it safely. I will be removing both of them one by one. So now to remove them, what you need to do is that uh, put some kind of a socket or something that goes in here like this, so that it will stop one of the pistons from moving. Now that's my final setup. So now we know that when we are going to press on the brakes, uh, this piston will stay on its place, but this one will pop out. I just pressed the brakes a couple of times and this is uh, so far that I've got. I'll just wait it one more time and see. I hope that it will come out. Uh, but yeah, before it comes out, you need to make sure that you get ready for the next step, which is the, to stop the loss of uh, brake fluid. And to do that, uh, what I'm using is I'm using an old uh, nitrile glove. So I'll just plug it in the place where uh, the coolant gets into the, the uh, brake fluid gets into the cylinder. I'll show you how I do it. Okay, now it is ready to come out. It's now moving. I can actually pull it out all the way. But before I do that, I just want to make, make sure that my uh, brake fluid level is enough in there. So just keep an eye on your blood fluid level if it's going down you just need to top it more and now what i'll do is that i'll just remove uh, both the piston and this uh, piston rubber cover uh, i'll take them out and i'll try to plug it with uh, plug the hole with a nitrile glove 
so i've plugged the lower hole with the glove remember that the upper hole uh, is the venting hole so it goes out and vents from here uh, when we are using the bleeding one so the principle is that the fluid gets from the bottom and goes to the top uh, which means that when you are venting or bleeding it out the air will come out from here so make sure to uh, plug the lower one not the upper one uh, i'm not big, a big fan of uh, uh, squeezing the squeezing the brake wires uh, the brake uh, hoses to stop the fluid inflow uh, this makes them weak and uh, prone to leakage anytime uh, during uh, stressful braking so yeah i think that in this case particularly i might lose uh, a few more drops but uh, at least i'm sure that my brake hoses are okay this is the amount of uh, the brake fluid that came out probably around 100 ml uh, at max and uh, this is the brake caliper uh, piston itself so here's a close-up look at uh, the brake caliper piston it used to be all silver and shiny just like the service but uh, with the passage of time it has gone all brown and dark on both sides so i'm not sure whether it's the reaction between the metallic surface and the brake fluid itself or is there any other chemical property to it but for some reason the overall diameter on this piston changed uh, due to this uh, blackish uh, growings on this piston walls and that's why the piston uh, finds it very difficult to move in and out of the caliper so what we are going to do now is that uh, just go ahead and uh, rub some of this stuff off uh, sand some of it down uh, so that uh, we can change uh, the overall diameter so what i have here there is uh, this old sandpaper i'm using uh, i don't know it's uh, yeah 800 bit paper I'll just try to remove some of this uh, brownish blackish stuff from the side walls and then I'll show you how it goes. So this is what's happening when I try to rub it. Uh, you can see that this is the surface that I'm sanding and this is yet to be sanded so you can clearly see that there is some uh, stuff coming uh, off of the walls of this uh, piston. The 800 grit paper, sandpaper wasn't too effective so I moved on to a 400 grit one and this uh, yellow stuff is everything that came out of it. It's still dark in color but uh, at least that uh, I'm happy I can't see any ridges or uh, uh, any discontinuation of uh, on the cylinder the walls are smooth so I'm just happy to put it back now so I didn't go too crazy with it yeah, still in good shape to put it back you need to lube the cylinder first and then uh, mount this uh, rubber sleeve uh, on the side that uh, that's going to go into the cylinder so this is the side that will touch the piston uh, this the uh, the brake pads and this is the side that will go into the piston housing so what you're going to do now is that uh, just remove whatever the plug that you have put in and there are ridges uh, you might be able to see when you're doing work on your car so just try to put this lip into the ridges and try rotating it and while using a flathead screwdriver to make sure that most of the ridges stay in it so i mean it will probably take a minute or so and less than that to get it in so once it is in you can just put it in and start compressing it in so this is what i meant by uh, putting it in so what you need to do is that uh, you have to use a flat head and just put the lip in and then use a flat head just like uh, uh, they used to change the tires and the, their machines will uh, keep a lid on the tire and the machine will rotate the piston so now if I rotate the piston and uh, another uh, I have a flat head over here what it will do is try to self adjust and once the lip is in uh, the other rest of the lip will go in smoothly so see now I have rotated it and it literally took me 10 seconds to put it in now I'm using a proper backing plate uh, the top of the cylinder uh, to push it in if you don't have a backing plate use a brake pad uh, because uh, it's important that you put uniform force on the cylinder otherwise it will you'll have uh, trouble getting it in so just remove any obstruction from this one so as this things goes in the other one will start coming out so once this goes to the bottom once it bottoms out it will automatic this lip will automatically get on top of it so you don't need to worry about it so this is the second piston and it took a lot of effort to come out i have to pump it multiple times uh, now looking at it uh, closer to the edge i can see that there are some uh, uh, ridges in there uh, let me see if i can focus in yeah 
So if you have a similar ridges, you might want to think about whether you want to replace it or uh, you were just going to repair it. Uh, for me, I'm just happy to rub it down and put it back in. Even with these ridges, it wasn't leaking. So the problem isn't the leaking, it's a sticking piston. So I'll just go ahead, rub it down properly, make sure that the ridges are gone because this is the area where it actually sits, uh, sits uh, practically on, uh, on the brakes themselves. So just make sure that this area is really smooth all around. So once it's all done, I'll just put it back. So these both of the pistons are now done and they are inside the calipers. Uh, and this is the total fluid, probably 150 to 200 millimeter milliliter that I lost. And uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, bleed the brakes, which I won't be showing on camera. All right, so now the final check, whether it sticks or it moves. So I'll just press the brakes a couple of times. So make sure that your pedal is not spongy. If it's spongy, it means that you're still here in the circuit. And now I'll just try to rotate the wheel. So it's not stuck anymore. Thank you for watching.